Once coined Florida's best kept secret, Navarre Beach is nestled between the Gulf Island National Seashore and the Navarre Beach Marine Park. It's approximately 12 miles of pristine emerald waters and white sugar sand. Let's talk about everything there is to eat, sleep, and play right here, right now. So the main reason why you're considering visiting or even buying in Navarre is the beaches, hands down. They're absolutely beautiful. The waters are, it's called the Emerald Coast, and it's because they are this emerald blue. On most good days, it's practically crystal clear. You can see your toes when you're up to your neck in water. The waters can usually kind of calm, it depends on the flag for the day. But there's everything to do with the water, right? So you can rent jet skis or wave runners, you can rent a boat, you can go on dolphin cruises. There's the fishing pier, there's tons of fishing, golf, fresh seafood, which you'll find those at all the restaurants, but you can also fish for yourself. You can go tubing, kayaking, paddle boarding, snorkeling, you can build sand castles. You can just relax and get your tan on. You can drink a frozen drink, a bushwhacker, or a margarita while you're on the beach. So everything there is to do beach related, it's here. It's some of the best beaches in the country, especially Florida. But the island's kind of broken up into two parts. So on the east side of the island where I'm at now, it's gonna be a lot more populated. This is where all the restaurants are, and there's also some condos and some high rises. So this is kind of gonna be where the main tourist attraction is. And then further west down the island is gonna be primarily housing. Because of the zoning regulations, there won't be any high rises down there, and there's not really any restaurants either. So a lot less populated, uh, but there's access points all up and down the island, public beach access, so you won't find a shortage there, but you can kind of enjoy it. You can go up and down the island wherever you end up you'll have a good time and the waters are just as beautiful all up and down and then you can also go over to pensacola beach just past the gulf island national seashore probably only about 20 to 30 minutes away depending on traffic and so you have access to two beautiful beaches while you're here in navarre so while you're here you might get hungry you might just want a cold beer or a frozen drink on the beach there's going to be quite a handful of options here on the east side of the island and that's relative this is a smaller island that's why people kind of like it it's a little bit more laid back but just a few options you've got Juana Pagados you've got Beach House Bar and Grill, you've got Sailor's Grill, you've got Windjammers on the pier, and you also have a new restaurant that used to be Broussard's, is now called Andy D's, that's actually behind me there. And if you go over the Navarre Bridge, it's just a few minutes away, maybe five minutes from where I am right now, you're gonna be in Navarre, the town, and you have a lot more options. Dewey Destin's, a Slippery Mermaid Sushi, just to name a few, that one's really good. Uh, not a lot of uh, sushi options here, so if that's what you're in the mood for, you definitely gotta check it out. And you've also got some breakfast spots. You've got ice cream over there, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a lot more things to do, only a few minutes away. You won't have a shortage of places to eat and drink while you're here. Okay, so maybe you're trying to just get out of the sun for a little while. Even though the beach here is stunning, maybe you wanna do something different. A few things, a few amenities you might wanna consider. For starters, I would suggest you go check out the Sea Turtle Conservation, which is also a part of the Marine Beach Park. But it's a cool place, it's inside. You can actually see a sea turtle, it's informative. Your kids could learn a thing or two. Uh, it's neat for adults as well. It's $5 uh, to get in, but it actually goes to helping preserve the sea turtle life here on the beach. So I would highly suggest you go take a look at that. A couple other things as well. Juan Pagados, I mentioned as a place to eat, but they often have live music. Grab a drink and there's beach volleyball. It's on the water so your kids can play while you relax in the shade. Definitely a cool spot. I would also definitely recommend the Navarre Beach Pier and Boardwalk. It stretches out hundreds and hundreds of feet over the water. Great views, you can often see dolphins from there. And you can go fishing as well. One of the best places to fish here on Navarre. It's only a couple dollars to partake. And they also have a little gift shop up front, so you can grab some apparel, some tourist stuff, or just a drink as well. I would suggest going to the Gulf Breeze Zoo while you're here. 
It is actually in Gulf Breeze, it's not in a bar, but it's only about 15 to 20 minutes away depending on the traffic, and it's a decent zoo, so that's fun as well. You can go feed some animals, see some lions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And lastly, cannot forget the Navarre Family Water Sports. This is where you can rent a pontoon boat, jet skis, wave runners, and they even have a little inflatable playground kind of obstacle course out on the water. So you can absolutely wear your kids out while you're here. And those are just a few things you might wanna consider besides just the beautiful beaches. So maybe you've been here before, or maybe after your trip, you're curious, what would it be like to actually own a property here? Whether it's for yourself, or an investment, or a rental, let's talk about it just a little bit. For a condo and a townhome, you're looking at starting kind of in the high 300s into the 400s, um, and that's not on the water. If you actually want gulf front views, you can go well into the seven and 800s um, and go up from there. It all depends on the square footage, how many bedrooms, etc. But that's a kind of a realistic range. As far as an actual home goes, you want a single family residence here. You don't want to deal with all the tourists and a high rise, etc. Um, you're looking at about seven to 800 thousand for a single family home and that's not on the water if you want gulf front you're talking about starting in the two millions um, and then on the other side of the island what we call the sound side not the gulf you're looking at starting over a million but keep in mind all of these properties could be tremendous investments you can rent them out short-term rentals and recoup a lot of your money back and even and then some you also have some tax benefits as well and if you're inter interested in rental projections, feel free to reach out, happy to provide those. But this is kind of a small, desirable island. It's not as big as some other beach towns, so you won't necessarily have hundreds of options, um, but a great investment here on a growing area that just doesn't have a tremendous amount of room for more growth. I hope you love Navarre Beach as much as I do. And if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to the channel, like it, I put out content all the time covering everything on the Emerald Coast, eat, sleep, play, and real estate. My name's Levi Fortner. I'm with the Fortner Group and LPT Realty, and I run a small team here. If I can help you with anything real estate related, feel free to give me a call, text, or an email, and my team and myself will give you our undivided attention in obtaining your goals. Until then, I'll see you guys soon. Take care.